Hello Canadian, hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. So if you like the sounds of that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Join our awesome crew because that's exactly what they are. And let me know in the comments what zone or what area of the world you come from just because it helps me engineer my videos a little bit suited, better suited towards you guys. And in today's video, we are doing another part to this series about soil amendments. So like I said in the last few videos, if you have any ideas on amendments that you would like to look at, then please let that, me know in the comments and I will for sure do them. The initial few videos are going to be the very obvious additives, but then we're gonna get into some crazier otter stuff. And in today's video, we're talking about perlite. I am here to tell you that they are not all created equally and some of the details I'm going to share with you will surprise you. I will leave an Amazon link down below for my favorite perlite that I like to use. And I'll also be going over the perlite that I absolutely despise. We will also be looking at the claim that perlite could be the result of fluoride toxicity. So that is the little brown kind of burnt edges that you get on certain types of plants. Very common in things like calatheas, also dumb canes can get it. So we'll be looking at that statement to see if it's true or false because maybe that is why you have your brown tips. When we're going through a soil amendments, I've been thinking about it and there are some very important topics that we will go through every single time we talk about them. The first one being the pH. So whether or not this will change the pH for your soil better or for worse or not at all. We'll also be looking at the cation exchange casting. If you've been here long enough and you've watched my soil science series where we actually go into the science of soil and we're always adding to that series as well, then you'll know what that is. And we'll get into exactly what that is later and why it matters, but it is a very important number to look at. And the last one is a porosity rating. And that porosity rating is going to be my own rating because there's really no set in stone scientific way of rating it when it comes to soil amendments on their own. So I'll be giving it a rating from one to 10 to give you guys an idea of what I think it's capable of. My porosity ratings are solely based on capillary action and how strong that capillary action is and whether or not it holds on to water or it actually lets it go. Porosity and cation exchange capacity matters, especially when we're talking about gas exchange and just natural drainage due to gravity. So what exactly is perlite? So this bag is very dirty because I have a soil bucket. Literally, I call it my potting bucket where all my stuff is in and this was like wrapped up and plopped on top. So it's got a lot of dirt on it. What exactly is perlite? It is volcanic glass that has been heated to 871 degrees Celsius or 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit. So a very, very hot. It then pops like Rice Krispies to 10 times its natural size, which makes it so lightweight. The end result is a pitted ball that is able to retain moisture, but also add aeration to the soil. So when we look at perlite, we notice that the outside of the ball is kind of pitted and odd looking, but that actually doesn't carry to the inside of it. It's only on the outside that we see those pits. Those pits, because they don't carry on to the inside, mean a few different things. First off, it means it has a mild capillary action, meaning it is able to retain water but not hold on to water very well. This is a good thing if you're looking for a good draining soil. So the natural effects of gravity, air movement, gas exchange will result in the evaporation of the water over time. Because it's very able to release water ambiently to the air around it, it is actually really good in the incidence of trying to increase the, the ambient humidity around a plant. So whether that is in like a pebble dish or if that's on the surface of the soil, it is very good at releasing moisture quickly 
compared to something like a vermiculite. Perlite has zero nutrients and it has a very neutral pH of seven. Miracle Grow will try to get you to believe that it has 0 0.04 nitrogen, point, yeah, it just phosphorus, potassium. See, it has it has a rating. It has a new well, the it has a nutrient rating according to Miracle Grow, but it's very very low and honestly doesn't add much. This low nutrient rating actually has to do with its cation exchange capacity, which is essentially non-existent. This is due to its lack of capillary action, but also its neutral pH. Both of these combined give us a cation exchange capacity of three milli equivalents per hundred grams. And that is literally just the number and the units that we use to measure cation exchange capacity. So for all intents and purposes, its rating is a three, which is very, very low. So when we look at that cation exchange capacity, it immediately tells us that the sole purpose of this product is for physical amendments and not for any kind of chemical or nutrient change of the soil. So because its porosity is only found on the outside of the actual particle itself, that means 70% of that particle, 75% of the particle by weight is porosity. And 30% of that 70% is always entirely air and not water at all. That's what makes it so valuable to gardeners in order to add aeration, which is very important to our soil profile. The other good news about this product is it is very reusable and it can actually last in your soil and hold its structure and its function within your potting soil up to five years. So now you're probably thinking, well, how are they not all the same? And it's because there are differences. For example, this package I have in front of me is the Miracle Grow brand. I've also used the Pro Mix brand. And I find the size of the perlite pellets to be very tiny. And when I get these tiny perlite pellets, I do not see them functioning the way I need them to. Just going to show you here. So you can see it literally looks like styrofoam. These are, it's not fake. It's not in our, it's inorganic, but it's not um, a, f a fake thing. Very much so alive and well. Now, because the Miracle Grow Perlite is so tiny, it probably doesn't have much of an impact on the drainage. It has a very small impact on drainage, but not much. The sole purpose of the tinier perlite is just to simply add aeration and gas exchange to the soil profile. If you're looking for something that adds drainage, then you're going to need to get a larger sized perlite pellet, which is what I have the Amazon link for down below. I don't have any on me because it's literally all in my potting soil, but that is what you want to use. You do not want to use this tiny stuff. This tiny stuff is actually best used for rooting cuttings. And the reason why perlite works so well in the tiny form for rooting cuttings is because of its air exchange combined with its slight moisture retention. So it's really, really good at any sort of plant cuttings do really well in a perlite setup compared to something like a water or a soil setup. So what is the cons of this product? Well, besides the size, um, I don't like how a lot of the potting soils use the smaller size stuff. It is not going to add to your drainage. It's not going to increase gravity's ability to pull moisture out of your soil. If you are having issues with overwatering or your soil is staying too damp for too long, you may want to look at the larger size pellets. Beyond that, the cons are that it's very dusty formula. So if you use it in your house, you will have a plume behind you as you add it to your potting soil. And it is not renewable, but it is reusable. Because it's not renewable, it does need to be mined and therefore it does have a slight environmental impact. The formula, and if you are wondering why I'm putting that in quotation marks, you'd probably want to check out the first video of this series, but the formula for this is one third perlite to basically any sort of potting soil. So that is the magical mix. Again, with the potting soil, the small stuff isn't doesn't do what you want it to do. It's uh, a cop out from the companies to even put that small stuff in there. You want that chunky large perlite and you want a third of that to the volume of potting soil that you have. That stuff is great. It is awesome. It works wonders. This is not what you want. 
this is solely for cuttings, cutting scenarios. That is it. So let's get into the myth of perlite and fluoride because this is a myth that definitely exists and I want to debunk it. So let me put my handy dandy spectacles on here so I don't miss any of the notes that I took on some of the studies I was reading about this idea. But so there was a group that did a study on perlite and fluoride and they actually used very fluoride sensitive plants one of which was a spider plant the other one was a lily and the next one was a tenetian bridal veil and i'll insert photos of what those plants look like those were the three plants that were used in this study so the hypothesis was that perlite causes some sort of toxicity and that they would find the toxicity most likely in the initial stages of the plant being added to a perlite system. The reason or the logic that they think that the signs would show up very early on is because the fluorite over time would be flushed out of the perlite as you water because it wouldn't be held in suspension due to that lack of cation exchange capacity. They thought initially they would see signs of it, but as they watered and the plant continued to grow, that that would eventually be leached out of the system and then you would no longer see it. So they did find upon testing perlite that the initial concentration of fluoride, fluoride in the perlite was at a level that is toxic to plants but they rinsed it out and then it immediately decreased. It is important to preface this with the perlite that they used naturally had a high fluoride concentration. I can't say whether or not Miracle, Miracle Grow or Promix or where these companies are getting this perlite from, what fluoride content is in them, but these scientists specifically used a perlite that had high amounts of fluoride in it. So naturally, perlite won't have this but from some mi mines it may so what they did is they actually tried this at all different phs as we've talked about this before different nutrients different chemicals will be leached from soil at different phs so what they did is they had the soil or the perlite at a whole bunch of different levels of ph all the way down to four and at none of these levels did they see any sort of fluoride toxicity symptoms. So let's just read out their conclusion verbatim what they found. The toxicity was more prevalent in the later stages of the crops. Follow-up studies with additional perlite sources found that perlite with an initial fluoride concentration of 1.7 parts per million, which again goes into the type or the source of the actual perlite itself, could have at least 50% of the volume of the substrate. So perlite with an initial concentration of 1.7 parts per million could be used in volumes up to 50% of the total substrate and produce zero effects of fluoride toxicity at a pH of 4.2. So they lowered that pH really, really far. They had volumes of that substrate up to 50% of which was perlite, and there was zero signs of fluoride poisoning. It was only in the systems that had 100% perlite at low pHs in later stages of growth that they actually started to see fluoride poisoning. So essentially what that is telling us is that Perlite is not a significant source of fluoride, even at pHs that generally should leach fluoride. It didn't happen. And therefore, we should not be concerned with this being an issue. So there you have it. There's the details on perlite and all of the wonderful things you can do with it. In summary, it has a neutral pH. It is a low cation exchange capacity, meaning its sole purpose is for physicality. It will do nothing to the chemistry of your soil. It will do nothing to the nutrition of your soil. It'll do nothing for the microbiome of your soil. It is solely for aeration. Now, aeration only comes when you get the larger size perlite, in my opinion, and put in at a rate of about 33% of the actual mix itself. The smaller size perlite is mainly used in my household for propagations, and that is it. I hope this was helpful. If it was, let me know in the comments below. 
Let me know if you guys ever add a little bit of perlite to your potting soil mix, or if you just use what comes out of the bag. I would love to know your guys' opinion. And also let me know if you've experienced a difference between the chunkier perlite versus this small crumbled up junk. I would also love to know. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.